Okay, so in this tutorial, we're gonna be making a simple sci-fi hallway render. Let me show you what it looks like and then we'll get into it. Okay, so this is the render. We're gonna be getting this character from Mixamo. We're gonna have all this fun lighting stuff. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna add is a box of so Shift A and we'll add our cube. And then we'll go to the transform settings right over here. And on the scale on the Y, just stretch it out right about there and then hit tab and we're gonna click. And we need to go to face select, click that, hold Shift. Click that one, hit X, and click Faces. And so now we have this empty box. Hit Tab, hit Tab. Now, since everything is deselected, we need to click A to reselect all the faces. Right click, subdivide, and then right down here, click on the dialog box. And on Number of Cuts, type in 50. Now let's add two modifiers. Let's add the subdivision surface, and let's add a displace modifier. So click the displace, click New, click this little icon, which brings you to the textures, and let's click distorted noise and on these two little boxes we're going to click cell noise on both of them which gives you this blocky sort of JS placement look. So right now it's too strong so we need to go back to the modifiers and give it a strength of 0.1 and right now they're extruding out. I want them to extrude in so we need to click negative 0.1. Boom. All right now I'm going to go back to the texture and just change the size of our blocks. All right, now we need to mirror this to make it longer. So the first thing we need to add is an empty, which will be our mirror object. So get an empty, plane axis, and we're just gonna bring it right to the edge of our, bring it right to the edge of our box. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit so we can see it intersecting with the box so we can see it hitting the edge. And we're just gonna bring it right here, barely to the edge. And let's add the mirror modifier. So click mirror right here on, on the axis, uncheck X, click Y, and then here on mirror object, click your empty, and now it perfectly mirrors what we have going on. Let's add our camera. So in your view, just select the current composition that you wanna do. So right about here, I'm gonna hit Shift A, add my camera, and then Control Alt Zero, snap it to view, and then now I'm just gonna move it around until I get it right. So for the composition that's fully up to you, just be creative and have some fun with that. Now click on your camera. Right now this is simulating a 50 millimeter lens and I want it to be a wide angle sort of fisheye lens. So you click on your camera, click on the camera icon down here and right here on focal length, I'm gonna bring it around 20 or so. Looks like 30 is pretty good. So you can see on the displacement, the squares aren't quite up and down and you can just fix that on the view. So on the subdivision view on one just fixes it like that. So I'm gonna keep my render at two and my view at one so I don't slow down my computer while I work. Now let's add our lighting and our shading. So the first thing we want to do is add the bright light right here, and that's going to be with a plane. So we're going to mesh, plane, and then RX90 to flip it. And then we're going to scale it up till it passes up our plane here, bring it all the way to the end, and then we're going to give it an emission shader. So go to your materials, new, on principled, switch it to emission, give it a strength of 20 for now. We're probably going to change that later, and we're going to give it a blue color Right up here on the camera icon, we're going to switch it to the EV engine now. We're going to start looking at the render. So hit Z and then rendered view. So now you can see how it's looking right now. The bloom is a little bit too strong, but we're going to change that as we go in the color management. But we're going to continue working. All right, now let's go into shading. So Blender 2.8 offers these really cool shading presets. If you don't have that, you would just go over here, make a new window, and then you would go to the shader editor right here. But we're going to utilize those presets because they're really great. So click shading and let's go to the view. Let's hit Z and go to rendered view. Make sure your box is selected right up here. Click new and now we'll have a principled BSDF. Let's make it metallic. Now it's really overtaken the scene. Now we're just gonna make our shade base color fairly dark. So now it doesn't overtake it. All right, now let's add two nodes to make some interesting shading going on in the bump. So we're gonna add a checker texture. We need to add a bump node We're gonna plug the bump into the normal and then the checker into the height. So now if you increase the scale of the checker, you can kind of see it inter interacting with our scene. So now if you change the scale of the checker, you can see it kind of interacting with our scene. And we need to add one more to sort of play with, to sort of distort what it's doing. And we're gonna add a Voronoi texture. So type in Voronoi, plug the color into the vector. And so it's making all these swirls. I want it to be straight. So we're gonna change distance to Chebyshev. And now we get these really cool, we get these really cool squares that we can play with 
in the design. So now to make it more powerful, we're going to add a color ramp. Click on the color ramp, plug it into the roughness, and then and then plug the checker texture into that. And so now you can really see what it's doing with all this. Now this is a bit too much. I'm going to bring the scale down quite a bit to right about there. We're going to change the white here. If it's not clicking right, you can just right here, click that, and it brings you to that one. And then I'm going to bring it to right about there, and that changes the intensity of the reflection on both of those. So we're going to change it right about there, so it makes it look pretty even. All right, now this is really cool, but we need to add more detail to make it more interesting and have it interact with the lighting. So we're going to take this bump node, click it, shift D, bring it down, and we're going to add a noise texture. So we're going to hit shift A, in OI, click noise texture, and plug the color into the height and the bump, the normal of the bump into this normal. You can add bump nodes right on top of each other onto one. You would just plug these normals into all the normal, and you can add layer on layer of detail. So one thing the bump node is doing is it's stretching across the mirrored and their already stretched square, and we want to treat it like it's evenly displaced. So we need to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. And we'll plug the vector of the mapping into the noise texture and then the object and the object plug into the vector. And what the object node does is it treats it like it's one whole object and it evenly distributes that displacement. So right now, obviously it doesn't look that good. We need to take the strength of the bump node for this setup and bring it all the way down and then just barely bring it in so we get just a little bit of that detail. Bring up the detail on the noise texture and then the scale up as well. And this part is just up to you, but I'm just gonna barely show it, just like that. So we need to add a little more detail, so we're gonna add a brick texture on top of this bump. So take the bump up here, Shift D, bring it down, and we need to add the brick texture, just like that. Plug the color into the height, and this bump into the normal of that bump. So now you can't really see it, we need to bring up the scale, and now you can start seeing it affecting. So now we get this really cool detail on top of the detail, and we get all this fun stuff that the light's going to interact with. Okay, so now we need to add these emission shaders on top of all these nodes that we've made. So I'm going to show you a really cool trick to sort of randomly place different shaders on things. So go back to the shader editor. Okay, so now we have all this. So right here on your material output, bring it out, and let's add a mix shader. Bring it right here in the middle and let's add an emission shader here. Plug the emission into the shader output right there. Make your strength at around 50 and we're gonna make it orange. And then we need to tell these shaders where to place each other. So we're going to add, first thing is a color ramp. Then a noise texture. Plug the noise into the color ramp and then we're just going to add a mapping and a geometry node. So normally you would just use a texture coordinate like in these two areas, but in this one with the geometry node we have this true normal output and that's going to do a really cool thing. So first, plug the color ramp into the factor output of your mix shader. So plug that in right there. And it's still too much. We need to take our color ramp on the black portion and just scale it down. And you can kind of see it's acting like lights turning on. There's this really cool effect. And you can and you can do some really cool light turning on off type renders with that. So you can take this and bring it right about there to about the amount of lights you want to have. And then you can take your detail and just play around with it. And then you can actually animate this part. You can take the rotation and scale it and you get this really cool strobe looking effect. So I'm just gonna move the rotation until I like the position of the lighting we have. And then you can, then you can play with the scale and it's all random and all fully procedural. All right, I'm gonna use this. This kind of gives you that neon sign, that kind of neon sign look that a lot of people put in their renders, but it's kind of faking that in a way. All right, we need to add a point light to make this plain, this blue, a little more extreme. So we're gonna go in and add a light here, point, and we're gonna go into wireframe mode so we can see through it. Take the point light and bring it all the way to the end here, right around there. Hit Z and go back to rendered. 
click on the point, click on this little light, click on this little light icon, and we're gonna make it that blue that the plane has. And it looks like right now strength of ten is pretty good. We might change that a little bit later. Right now these blocks are a little too high for my liking, so I'm gonna go and change it in the strength right here. So I'm gonna give it 0.0. .0. I'm gonna give it negative 0 0.05 just to bring them down a little bit. And of course on your subdivisions you would bring it up to two and then that changes it. So once you're at this point, make your render and your view on the subdivisions the same. Otherwise when you render it, the positions of your lights are gonna be different. So now let's change the color here. So on our point light, we're gonna go and make it a deeper blue on this region here, as well as the plane. Change the lighting here to that same blue blue area. So now we get a better so now we get better color. And then we'll go back to the shading on our box and change on the emission. Bring the color more toward the red. But once you make it red, then it has that bad look. So bring it here, right? So you get a highlight, but you don't lose that. So right around that area. And then I'm going to play with where these lights are positioned a little bit more. All right, now the last thing we need to do is take our plane here. And we'll make the strength of 100 so we get a fully white color here. So it looks sort of like a horizon or something like that. And then let's add our character. So let's go to Mixamo. Okay, so Mixamo is a free service that Adobe provides. You don't need an Adobe account. You just make a free account here and you can make some characters. So first, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select this red character here. Click Use Character and then go to Animations and I'm going to type in Idle. We just want him standing still. So we're going to pick this one right here, Idle. And if you want to see how he looks once it loads, you can see this way. This will be the, the composition generally, so that will look pretty good for our character and then click download right here on format keep it at fbx and then whatever your frames a second is for me it's 24 so i'm going to change it 24 and download okay so now that it's downloaded click file import and we're going to click fbx and then navigate to where you saved it and click on it all right so to move him you would just click on armature right here and then move him down you'll be able to move him with that armature and nothing else so they all just parented to all of that and then scale him down and bring him up. Compositionally, you don't want his head hitting that line up there. So bring him down and right there so he fits in the square. So all we have left to do is add some contrast to this scene and you'll do that in your color management. So click on this camera icon. Right here there's color management. Make sure you're, make sure you're in filmic and then here on look, click to very high contrast and then on gamma, Bring it down a little bit so you can. So now you have this really good contrast. So you don't have to go back in Photoshop and add more. You can do all that internally in Blender. For your Eevee settings, I've seen people put a thousand samples in Eevee. That's not something you have to do. At a certain point with Eevee, there's a cutoff point to where you don't need samples. If you were using Cycles, a thousand samples would look really good. But with Eevee, because it's a real time render engine, a thousand samples is far too many. The default settings at 64 is really all you need. So leave it at 64. Up here you'd click render and then click render image. So here you go. That's the result that I got for mine. And that's the tutorial. So there you go. You made a really cool sci-fi tunnel animation. If you make it, send it to me on Instagram. It's linked in the top link of the description. And thank you for watching.